far from multiple procedural attack on what happened to Article 370, with me are Professor Shugato Bose, who has condemned it as a reckless assault on federalism and democracy. Simply put, sir, why? Well, uh, we have to really consider what kind of Indian Union do we want? Are we going to try and get the allegiance of our regional peoples only based on coercive control from the center? Or are we trying to build a different kind of India where we invite these regional peoples to have a sense of belonging to our union by giving them a share of our economic prosperity, our cultural glory. On many counts, uh, this is an attack on both uh, federalism uh, and democracy. Uh, Here was a state uh, which was really asking for a larger measure of autonomy. And it has been reduced to the status of two union territories with lieutenant uh, governors. This is basically a calculated insult. Uh, It is heaping humiliation on the people of Kashmir, Jammu and Ladakh. Just imagine, the people of Ladakh will not even have a legislature. That is an assault on democracy. The people of Kashmir uh, were not consulted uh, on this uh, move. Uh, So they had no choice uh, when suddenly they were told that Jammu and Kashmir is going to be downgraded. So I think that uh, we really need to think very carefully. Can we really achieve genuine substantive Indian unity by issuing legal fiats from above that everybody is one? Or do we have to learn to respect differences and then rise above them in order to craft a healthier uh, Indian unity? Perhaps a diversionary question, but you know, our constitution has apparently permitted it, allowed it to be used in a way that um, uh, the government has been able to almost push it through. Our constitution uh, has uh, various states of exception written into it. Uh, Even the imposition of the emergency in 1975 was constitutional. It was not really extra constitutional and four out of five Supreme Court judges upheld the imposition of the emergency as lawful. Uh, Now, just because there are certain states of exception that can be found in any constitution, uh, we can't say that certain moves don't violate uh, the spirit of a constitution or political ethics on which any democracy must be based. So that is what I'm, you know, questioning. Just think of of, uh, how, you know, Parliament uh, uh, was mocked uh, yesterday. At 11 o'clock in the morning, the Home Minister comes without any prior notice to read a presidential order. Now, it's true that such presidential orders or constitutional orders issued by the President of India on the advice of the government of the day uh, had been uh, pronounced before, even in 1954, uh, which is when uh, the autonomy promised in Article 370 began to be whittled down. That's true. Uh, but is this substantive democracy? Is this not undermining our basic democratic ethos? You know, these are the issues which we must uh, consider. And I really also must add that what we are facing today in our country is not just a political crisis or a crisis of democracy. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are moving towards uh, a Shobhota Shankot, uh, what Rabindranath Tagore uh, referred to as a crisis of civilization. 
it is so hard the, these days for thinking people uh, to express empathy for those Indians who are marginalized or excluded uh, without being charged uh, with being not sufficiently nationalistic or patriotic. Mm -hmm. My view, and this is something that I expressed in the last debate on Kashmir in which I spoke in the Lok Sabha in 2016, uh, is that, uh, you know, uh, a federal, flexible, free union will in fact be a much stronger and longer lasting Indian Union. What today's government is doing is simply to provoke greater alienation. And you can, of course, use brute force to suppress uh, expressions of dissent in Kashmir. You know, there's Section 144 there, curfew in many parts, there's no internet, there are no mobile services, even mainstream political leaders of the state mm -hmm. uh, are under arrest. And for a while, you can deploy brute force and imagine that you have won. But a true victory for the idea of India would have been if we could have uh, made young people uh, in the northern part of India or in the northeastern parts of our country, you know, willingly embrace India, want to be part of India uh, rather than, you know, wanting to leave. So we really need to consider today the longer term. And uh, I hope uh, that there will be still some space uh, left for some debate about what is the normative value of democracy that we must uphold? What are the substantive features of federalism that are really a requirement for genuine Indian unity. In a country as diverse as ours, it is often necessary to have somewhat asymmetric uh, federal arrangements. Right. Uh, when I first spoke in Parliament, mm -hmm. I had told the first Modi government mm -hmm. uh, that don't confuse uh, democracy with majoritarianism and uh, uniformity with unity. But that's exactly what they are doing. What we are seeing today is not the practice of democracy, democracy, it's majoritarianism rampant. And we are talking about uniformity, an artificial version of it being sought to be imposed from above, when we really ought to be thinking of crafting Indian unity from below by giving everyone a genuine sense of belonging and a democratic voice in their own future. Is Kashmir the last stop or should we expect action as it were in other parts of the country? Well, uh, you know, Kashmir is, I think, uh, being used as an example uh, of what can be done uh, elsewhere. Now, if uh, the government of the day can suddenly bifurcate a state without any debate or consultation and downgrade a state to the level of a union territory, there is nothing to prevent them from doing the same thing in the case of other states. And that is why I think that uh, those regional parties uh, which have been cowed into submission uh, and uh, have uh, supported uh, the government uh, yesterday on what they have done to Kashmir may live to rue the day because uh, this may be just one somewhat extreme example, uh, but there is a trend towards over-centralization, uh, taking away uh, the 
rights of states, uh, impinging on the free life of regional peoples, completely ignoring that our best political thinkers uh, have always believed that Indian unity can really only be of a federal type. It is only by respecting differences that you can rise above them. Thank you. I will ask you, however, for a quote of the historian in Kashmir. In which century was it? This was a 12th century chronicler called Kalhana, uh, who wrote a book called Raj Tarangini, River of Kings. And in it, he wrote that Kashmir can be conquered by the uh, power of spiritual merit, but never by the force of soldiers. This is a piece of sage advice, uh, which Modi and Shah have no time for.